For the 23rd, we're back to your favorite as you started off this program. William Jennings Bryan ran in 1896 against McKinley, ran in 1900 against McKinley, ran in 1904 against William Howard Taft, lost all of those. Um, what else can you remember? I mean, you mentioned the Cross of Goldsmith. Why Jen was that such a big deal? Here's what, I, here's what intrigues me about William Jennings Bryan. He's so misunderstood. He's, if, if a modern... If one, of, if one of your students has heard of him, he's heard of him as uh, Matthew Harrison Brady in Inherit the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And this great play that, yeah. that was brought back after 9-11, and it's originally written as a, uh, and during the McCarthy period. It's, a, it's supposed to be a, 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 a morality tale against the Red Scare. It's brought back uh, and after 9-11, I suppose, to be a morality tale not to persecute Muslims. Uh, and William Jennings Bryan figure it's based on the Scopes trial, the monkey trial. Where uh, on evolution, and he's in the play, and and in the book, and in, on television, and all the movies, he's a buffoonish figure. But but William Jennings Bryan wasn't against Darwinism because he was a, a, a flat earther or an uncaring bigot. He was against Dar he was against Darwinism for the same reason most of the liberals of his day were. It was going to. It was conflated then with social Darwinism, and 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 William Jennings Bryan was very much worried that Darwinism would be used as an evolution would be used as an excuse to not help the poor and to not help immigrants and not, not help children and not help people with disabilities and would be used in a way that would just have this sort of Nietzschean determinism and that's what he was really arguing against and he's my I picked him out because he's this singularly misunderstood guy who today's liberals ought to venerate instead of criticize. Mm -hmm. Baker, would you have any idea who we could compare him to today? Oh boy. Um, I mean it's mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. what do you well it, let me tell you what I think about him and okay. then maybe that'll help um, generate a, a, a modern uh, a political figure. I, I think of him as and this is why it's so ironic that he loses. He's a he's really good campaigner. Uh, those speeches, uh, there are several of them besides the Cross of Gold, that, that are quite memorable. He also I is uh, committed to really campaigning. Um, he's one of the uh, modern presidents, of one of the first modern presidents who under gets off of his porch, as William McKinley did not and travels around. I think he even campaigns in an automobile. Is he not the first? Yeah, yeah I don't know. But <laughs> the he, yeah. first. Oh, he loves so, speaking. Yeah. Um, it is an amazing statistic to show you how much Brian transformed the campaigner's art. In 1896, more Americans turned out to see Brian um, and McKinley in person. And that included the 700,000 who mm -hmm. took the train to Canton, Ohio. Yeah. Uh, more people turned out to see them in person than 100 years later turned out to see Clinton, Dole, and Perot in person. <laughs> I mean, it, it was an extraordinary yeah. time when people defined themselves by their party allegiance. Yeah. It was as polarized as anything today. One other quick thing, though, about Brian is one speech. Um, I mean, the Cross of Gold speech so galvanized that convention. Without that speech, he would not have been nominated. Jump forward almost 60 years, Adlai Stevenson, who does not want to run, delivers a welcoming address to the Democrats. Jump forward in, uh, 50 years, Barack Obama, in effect, delivers a welcoming uh, a keynote. So you can still... The connection between Brian and Obama is one speech can make a career. Did he have any other government jobs? He was congressman from Nebraska. From, from Nebraska, but and he was a lousy Secretary of State. Yeah, he was for whom? Uh, for Woodrow uh, Wilson. Well, I don't. I wouldn't say he was lousy. <laughs> he retired um, uh, he and resigned because over a principled issue. But that doesn't. And mean. I always wondered why people like Cyrus Vance, that's the first, right? Cyrus Vance, not the yeah. one who's the prosecuting attorney in New York, uh, why uh, uh, Americans don't resign when there's an issue of, of principle. And uh, what you can see his, his commitment to principle and still think he was. Do you a remember failure. what Cyrus Vance resigned about? No, he did not. He didn't. He he opposed uh, something and then it did not. Yeah, I and thought he, I not. thought he stepped down. 
I don't. I don't think so. But we'll check. We'll check I thought he quit on. over the. Wasn't it over the attempted rescue? I thought it was the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the failed rescue of the, the Carter American failed re rescue. Hostages? Wasn't that the? I think the it issue? was. I mean, I thought he. I thought he. Uh, and then and then Edmund Muskie was appointed in his so place. So you think he did resign? I think so. So I'm, I'm giving him a bad rap. We're, we're, uh, <laughs> oh, maybe we're, I'll be... We have a big hole here in this program he's, that we're going to have to find no, out. He's no William Denny and, Bryan. And whoever thought that Cyrus Vance would come up in the conversation. <laughs> September 16th, 